Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Photoshop and the history log. You can find this in the preferences. It's been sort of tucked away and you might never ever think about using it. History log, it is super useful, super great feature and it stores basically everything you do in certain forms. So this is a, this basic, most basic, this is in its uh, sessions only details. So you get like Photoshop launched, Photoshop quit, Photoshop launched. There's not much information there, but that's what it just stores. So you can see the times that you work with. Now I'm using 2021. You could use 2019, 20. I'm not certain when it actually was introduced. So maybe there's a version where you suddenly find it's not available. So let's just go through it now. So there's my history log. And what I can do, just go to Photoshop and preferences and go down to history log. So there's history log. Now I haven't got it on at the moment. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn it on now. So there's my history log turned on. That's all you have to do. Just go here, history log, click there, and then it's on. Or turn it off. However, you have to restart Photoshop. I've always found that. I don't know if that's the case, but I've always done it afterwards. Seems to work better that way. So I would suggest that's the best thing. So history log, and then what you can do, you've got metadata. So the metadata is really useful because it saves it. Say you're working in a particular file, it will save it to that file, all your work. However, the text file, which is underneath, you can save it there, text file. You can choose the location for that text file. That was the one I was just showing you. That's the text file. So you can put it to an external file, external drive, and then, or maybe the cloud, I guess, even. I haven't done that, but you possibly could do that. But you can put it on, obviously, onto your machine as well. So a text file, but that's useful because what happens, it goes over different documents. So it's if you've got like 15 documents you're working on, it records it for all the documents, so it's not just in the metadata. And I'm going to go for both. Now I've got sessions only first, so sessions only. Let's click OK. Right. Quick Photoshop. And now let's start up Photoshop again. And Photoshop, quickly start that up. And into Photoshop. And now when you go into Photoshop, you can see here, just click edit the file, and it says Photoshop launched. That's about it. Photoshop launched, and so now if I, let's just try and create a file. So file, new, create, and let's just, just something, do something quickly, something like that, and then close. Do save, and now once I've done that, let's just go to the file, and it doesn't save anything other than it says Photoshop quit, Photoshop launched. It doesn't say any information about files open or anything. So you might not find that very useful. However, Let's just go to the next one. So let's just go to Photoshop, Preferences, and History Log. And again, it's still on, obviously. I've still got it on, both. And I'm going to go for Concise. So select that, click OK. Now, quickly close Photoshop again. Start Photoshop again. Now, we're into Photoshop again. Now, File and New, and Create File. And let's just quickly create, um, just do some work. And it's, I'm just going to create some type or something. Let's see, type, uh, whatever, if, I, if it lets me type. Sometimes it always blocks it. You just sort of go in there think, ooh, why, what's it doing? Right, let me type something. Thank you. Okay, got that. Now I'm just going to close that file now, close all, because I don't really want to save it. However, now let's just go to the history log file at this time. So this is for concise, concise. And now you can see it's a lot more information, not a huge amount, but it's fairly concise, as it says. So you've got Photoshop and, and here's, obviously this is the information. Let's, let's, let's just go up here. And you can see the general gist of things. Photoshop launched, file untitled one, opened, gradient, 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 new type layer, file untitled closed. That's it, gives you, and it gives you the, obviously the date, and it gives you the thing. So that's quite useful. It's quite useful. So I'm just going to remove that now. Because I'm going to go to the last one. And that's the detailed one. And you could use this for accounting purposes. You've got, obviously, you, it's not brilliant because, of course, you can, of course, edit. <laughs> so it's not so uh, useful. People can edit the file. It's just a text file. Though I guess you could say if it's stored on a cloud device, I guess it's, uh, it's a bit more of a record. So, right. What you can do, you can go to Photoshop again, and let's just go again to Preferences and History Log. 
and you can go over here to detailed. So detailed is select on and click OK. Now I'm just going to quit that again and start it up again. Let's just quit go now to do some work on this file and new crate. And again, I'm just quickly going to create a bit more. So I'll just do a few gradients, maybe apply blur or something. I'll house in blur. You can just set that to say 59 and maybe some type. Let's hope oh, it's always blocks. It always seems like really, I always find that feature really slightly annoying. Because I sometimes I just want to just type something and just pops up and it just seems to always stop you from typing something. I know that's not the purpose of it, but it always seems to be the result of. So you've got that, and I've done some work there, and I'm going to close the file now. Close all. Don't save. Okay, so what we've got now in the file, let's just go there. And we've got again Photoshop edit log.txt. And you can see this time you've got an awful lot more information. So you've got here open, new document, false, false, whatever, RGB, color mode. So you've got all that information. Obviously, you've got time. You've also got the depth. You've got all the profiles, guides. You've also got the gradient. So you've got the gradient information. So you've got from 30 pic minus 30 pixels to minus 10 pixels. Oh, obviously, XY. And you've got the XY again, obviously, the, where you release the mouse. You've got mode, difference, linear. So it's got all that information. You've got the brightness for each of the stops. Now, of course, if you were, if I was using a brush or something, it would give more obviously details about that. So you've got that. You've got transparency information, transparency stop list. You've got midpoint information. More about the next gradient because obviously I, I applied it a couple of times. And then you've got type, new type layer, make text layer using text layer, and it's got what the text was, warp, style none, but Ben and so on. So and there's a whole heap of information about. Uh, Transform baseline shifts, font caps options, vertical scale without faux, uh, bold, etc., etc., without colors, no breaks, and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot, a lot of it, and it goes on for quite a while. Desired glyph scaling percent, every bit of information that you've always want to know about desired glyph scaling percents. Who knows? Auto kern metrics, however, and it goes further down, and also even down to the point where you've got like moves and you've got. Um, saving now weirdly hmm, i thought i did a ah, maybe i did a blur somewhere else the blur oh blur was probably up further up oh yeah it's gaussian blur. i knew i'd done gaussian blur. there is radius 59 pixels so i actually stored the gaussian blur. unfortunately one thing that's really weird and slightly odd it doesn't tell you the time of when you applied the effect would have been nice actually if they had stored the time obviously maybe the date's not so much use but the time would have been useful just so you could just see during the how long it took to do various tasks maybe i don't know <laughs> who knows however that is that and now what you can also do and that's just obviously the text file but i'm just going to go back and just finish off with file the new and let's just create and i'm just going to quickly do some more here so i can just quickly create some things i'm just going to do that and once I've done that, what you got is file info. info. So file and file info. And you go there and you've got the basic and you've got loads of other information here. And Photoshop. Yes, here it is. I knew it was somewhere. History. You've got the history. This is the metadata. It's actually stored it away in this history section. So this is associated with this document only. That next document you do will have a different, obviously, different data. It won't store this. So you've got all the various, exactly the same information that was before. I assume. I haven't checked it. Maybe there's some slight difference. I, to be honest, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't seem to put the percentage bit. I wonder why. Hmm. Okay. There's, it does seem to be slightly different. Maybe it does store different information. I don't know. But that's the metadata information stored away in history. So obviously when you now save your document, like a PSD format or whatever formats that you use that saves metadata, well, that metadata will hopefully be saved. Of course, sometimes you might only just save that file name or something, but it certainly it is there stored away in the metadata. So if you want to get rid of it again, the history log that is, you just simply go to Photoshop, Preferences, 
and history log and then in the history log you can always say click off don't want it anymore and that's it and then of course close down your photoshop and restart and it's not going to be using that again but it's a useful i think it's a useful feature if you want to store something and it actually is quite useful in terms of develop maybe scripts or something if you try and want to understand scripts i think if you do the tasks and then you can look at it and you can see what the functionality behind all the various functions and you can then get a bit more of an idea in terms of how you can then go and create maybe a script using like gradients and those sort of things so well hope you found this tutorial of interest always adding new tutorials all the time about photoshop illustrator finity photo finity designer and many many other applications as well also if you've got any questions anything that i've explained incorrectly please let me know maybe put a comment turn around and say no you don't need to restart photoshop i think you do but i don't know it always seems to be that way of mine anyway so uh dislike or like thank you much